Hello, and welcome to the Doctors of Running podcast, where we, a group of doctors of physical therapy, discuss the art and science of the stuff that we're putting on our feet. I'm Andrea Myers, and I'm here to talk about my favorite shoes of 2022. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to join the rest of the team when they recorded the Best of 2022 episode, so I'm here today to share my thoughts on the shoes that stood out for me this past year. The first category I'm going to start with is the Daily Trainer category. And while the New Balance Beacon is my hands-down favorite daily trainer, it's not a 2022 shoe. So the shoe I actually put the second most miles on this year is the Saucony Tempest. The Tempest actually surprised me a little bit with how much I like it, which is a good illustration of why just looking at the specs of the shoe doesn't always translate to how it's going to feel or how much you enjoy running in it. Um, Saucony did a great job with the PBAX midsole of the shoe. They really balanced out responsiveness with cushioning. And I found this shoe just to be so incredibly consistent and reliable for my easy runs. No matter how tired I was, no matter if my feet were sore, I knew how the Tempest was going to feel, and it always felt good. I never had any hot spots in the shoe, never had any discomfort, never felt like the shoe was forcing me to run in a particular way. So I, I've got to say the Tempest is the best daily trainer that came out this year. Um, I really like the fit of the upper of the shoe. Some Saucony uppers are a little too tight in the forefoot for me, but I found the mesh upper of the shoe to be just the right width, not too wide, but not constrictive at all. I never got any irritation or hot spots here. I really felt like the mesh combined with the overlays that you can see here and here um, really helped the shoe to hug the foot nicely. Never had any issues with foot translation, never any blisters or calluses in the shoe. So, And that's what you want in a daily trainer, one that you can just reach for and go do your miles without having to worry about it. I feel like the rocker geometry of the shoe is really well done. It wasn't severe where you feel like you're falling off the front of the shoe. It just really helps keep you moving forward. And again, that's what you want. I really enjoyed some of the non-traditional stability elements of the shoe, so much so that I chose the Tempest for the best stability shoe of the year. So I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, but for me, the Tempest is the best daily trainer of 2022. So moving on to the next category, the Max Cushion category, my pick is the New Balance Super Comp Trainer. When I first got the shoe, I wasn't sure how much I was going to like it. I thought it felt heavy, and the huge stack height kind of put me off, like, oh, am I really going to like running in a shoe that is so tall? But as soon as I went out for a run in it, I joke it kind of feels like you've got a dirt road, road strapped to your feet. You just don't feel the pavement at all. And sometimes when you're really tired or if your feet are really sore, that's what you need. You still need to go get your miles, but you need to not feel the ground. And that is what the SC trainer is best at for sure. Um, I really like how New Balance did the rocker geometry of the shoe. It's got a really nice heel bevel for people who land more on the rear foot. For me, landing on my lateral midfoot just felt like I landed and then the forefoot rocker just propelled me forward. And when you're really tired, it's nice having that assistance in uh, pushing off and keeping your feet turning over. Um, I also think that they did a great job with the upper. I like the asymmetrical laces across the dorsum of the foot, really prevented any irritation from the laces. I also found that the mesh, which has just a little bit of stretch to it, really reduced any potential irritation that I might have around the ball of the foot. Even if I had done a run earlier that day and the shoe I ran in irritated the ball of my foot a little bit, if I had a second run later that day and I wore the SC trainer, my feet felt fine. So that's really, uh, that was a big positive for me that I had a shoe that I could wear and be confident in even if my feet were sore. Um, this is an eight millimeter drop shoe, 
but because of the rocker geometry, it feels less to me because of where I land on my lateral midfoot. So it, give it a chance, even if uh, you tend to prefer lower drop shoes like I do, um, you may find that it feels like a lower drop shoe than stated. So the next category we're going to talk about is the stability category. And like I said, my pick for that category is also the Saucony Tempest. The Tempest is really a game changer when it comes to stability shoes. We don't see any traditional posting in the shoe, but what you do have are a lot of what we call non-traditional stability elements that are meant to help center the foot and guide forward motion rather than forcing the foot to move in any particular direction. So the Tempest has some pretty good sidewalls built into the midfoot. It's got some sole flare, the whole length of the shoe, more so in the heel than and the forefoot, tapers a little bit in the midfoot. And it's got nice rocker geometry, heel bevel, forefoot rocker, and all of these features serve to help center your foot regardless of where you land and help to promote forward motion. So as someone who really doesn't like traditional stability shoes because it puts me even more laterally on my midfoot, I found that landings were comfortable in this shoe, and I felt like it just helped propel me forward. It didn't force me to do anything, but it just made my running a little bit smoother. So again, Tempest, hands down, best stability shoe of 2022 for sure. So moving on to the stable neutral category, my pick for 2022 is the New Balance More V4. This shoe, I've just loved running in this year. It's relatively lightweight for how high of stack height it has. It's got a four millimeter drop, and that's something that I definitely prefer. And this neutral stability elements in it again, really help to center my landings and my transitions without forcing motion anywhere. Out of all of the shoes that I've tested this year, this shoe in particular, I feel like keeps me from landing so severely at my lateral midfoot. And I think that's because of just how much lateral sole flare there is in the forefoot of the shoe. So when I land, it feels like I'm landing a little more medially than I normally do and reduces the chance that I'm going to get a callus or any irritation around my fifth MTP joint. The other really great stable neutral features of this shoe are just how wide the base is. There aren't many shoes out there that have a wider base than this. Um, again, got some nice sidewalls through the midfoot and the forefoot. The heel counter is really well done. It's not rigid, but it secures your heel nicely, and there's lots of nice padding internally to just hug your heel, again, without forcing your rear foot to do anything. Unlike the SC Trainer, I found that I could use this shoe for faster paces, probably because it's lighter weight, because of its lower drop. And because the rocker geometry is just a little bit smoother than the SC Trainer. So I felt like I could make the shoe do what I wanted as opposed to the SC Trainer kind of making my foot do what it wanted. Which sometimes you want the shoe to help you out a little more than others. But I did like the more muted rocker geometry in this shoe as compared to the SC Trainer. So... For stable neutral, I think that New Balance really hit it out of the park with this shoe, and I'm really excited to put more miles on it. You can see I've barely worn the rubber outsole at all. It's just dirty, but there's really no wear anywhere. So I expect pretty good durability out of this shoe. So the next category is trail shoes. And I used to do a lot of trail running. We've got a lot of really technical trails here in Connecticut. But unfortunately, I've had several pretty bad ankle sprains, and that's one of the things that kind of helped me transition more over to the road. But the reason I've chosen the Saucony Endorphin Edge as the best trail shoe of 2022, there are a lot of great features about it, but the number one thing for me is 
this shoe feels like it keeps me from rolling my ankles. And it's not a stability shoe, but because it's got some sole flare in the forefoot and because of the asymmetrical carbon plate, it just feels like it keeps me from landing too far laterally at my midfoot and it helps me to transition to push off a lot better than other trail shoes I've run in. Besides that feature, which I really appreciate, it's lightweight. The Power Run PB midsole is responsive. It provides sufficient cushioning, but it still provides enough ground feel when you're on the trails, which is important. I don't like really high stack trail shoes because you need to feel what you're running on so that your body can respond to the change in terrain. And I think that the Endorphin Edge just does a great job of balancing cushioning, responsiveness, but still preserving ground feel. Um, again, really nice fitting upper, really comfortable. I never felt like my foot was moving around in the shoe, even if I was on really technical terrain. So, so I, I'm really impressed with Saucony's shoes this year and particularly impressed with the uppers of a lot of their shoes. I've done most of my trail running this year on a bridle path that's, you know, fairly wide, but it's got a ton of rocks, a lot of roots, it gets muddy. And I've taken the endorphin edge up to 15 miles on that trail without any worry about rolling my ankle, without any discomfort or hot spots. It's an awesome shoe. Um, I did use it on some more technical single track as well. And it's just so nimble and light. And again, it gives me a lot of confidence on the trails, which is something I've struggled with since I've had so many ankle sprains. So top trail shoe of 2022 for me, the Saucony Endorphin Edge. So now we're going to move on to the performance categories. And the first category is non-plated performance trainer. And for me, there's there was no question in my mind what my choice was going to be. It's the Topo Spectre. So while I love plated performance shoes, I really like having a shoe that's not plated that I can use for intervals more often than not. And the Spectre really checks all the boxes for what I look for in a non-plated performance trainer. It's lightweight. It's responsive. It's got a later toe spring. Topo's toe spring design just really works nicely for me. I feel like it helps me push off without being too aggressive the way that, say, like the Asics Magic Speed is. Um... Topo's upper and just the shape of their shoes works really nicely for me. I really like the wide toe box that Topo has. I've never had any irritation around the ball of my foot in the shoe or in any Topo shoe, actually. They do a really good job with lockdown with the laces. No discomfort from the tongue or no lace bite. The heel counter is really well done. You can see it's flexible but it still secures your heel. There's a little bit of padding here, but not so much that it feels plush or uncomfortable. Um, I would say the outsole could probably be improved a little bit. You can see that I've worn quite a bit here because that's where I land. But even so, it's not like the shoe is breaking down. It's just got some abrasion. So I'll definitely get more miles out of the shoe. You can see that where the rubber outsole is, I really haven't worn it down much at all. So pretty good durability there. Although I know that other testers, particularly Matt, have worn theirs down a lot faster. But I found the Spectre to perform well from marathon pace all the way down to like 10K pace. Anything faster than that, I kind of felt like the shoe was a little sluggish. But as far as a shoe that you can use for like marathon training, if you don't want to use a plated trainer, the Spectre is the best choice in my opinion. I've really enjoyed using it this year and will definitely get a lot more miles on it in 2023. So now we are at the racing category and we broke down the category into two, one marathon racers and two, a racer for 
half marathon distance or below. But I actually chose the same shoe for both categories. And that shoe is the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3. This shoe has really exceeded my expectations this year. Um, I've run in both the one and the two and used it in races. And while I liked it, it was just lacking a little bit for me. I found one and two too firm to use for marathon type racing or marathon intervals. And I found the Vaporfly to just perform better at shorter intervals or shorter race distances. But the Endorphin Pro 3 really changed that. And I've used the shoe for speeds, marathon pace, all the way down to 800 pace. And it kind of feels like the shoe responds based on the pace you're running. And that's probably not true, but I think it's a testament to how Saucony designed the shoe, that it's so versatile at a variety of paces. But things that I particularly like about the shoe, again, the upper just fits so nicely. It's one of the most breathable uppers out there. You really can see through it. Um, But even if you use it in the rain, the shoe doesn't fill up with water. It drains pretty well. The tongue is really thin. It's got some holes in it to save weight and, again, add to the breathability. But never had any irritation from the laces, despite how thin the tongue was. I feel like the heel counter is well done. It's got a little more structure than the Pro 1, which I I find the heel counter of the 3 to be more comfortable than the 1. But the biggest improvement in the 3 compared to the 1 and the 2 is just the responsiveness of the midsole. The 3 has that familiar super shoe bounce that we've expected from other brands. And I could really just feel the shoe propelling me forward, whether I was running marathon pace, half marathon pace, 5K pace, or even mile pace. It just, it responds and it helps you. And that's what you want in a racing shoe. So I used it in the Kiowa Marathon last weekend. I used it in a 10-mile race earlier in the year. And I've used it for a ton of workouts. And I've just found it to be really versatile and dependable and one of my favorite performing super shoes ever. So looking forward to putting a lot more miles on the Pro 3. This particular pair is pretty worn. You can see that I wore a little hole through the outsole here. So I've got a new pair that I've put a few miles on. Um, But as far as best super shoe of the year, year, in my opinion, the Pro 3 is it. So the last category I'm going to talk about is the New Balance Beacon category, um, which that's, the Beacon is my favorite daily trainer, I think, of all time. It just performs so well for me. It's comfortable. It's never caused any hot spots in my feet. I can use it for easy runs. I can use it for strides. I can use it for workouts. It's It really is the most versatile shoe I've run in, and I'm really bummed that New Balance has decided to discontinue it. But things that I like about it, Wide toe box, lightweight midsole with lower stack. Um, The only thing I don't like is the lack of full rubber coverage on the outsole, which has reduced its durability for me. I rarely get more than 200 miles out of a pair of Beacons. But New Balance really made a great daily trainer with the Beacon, and I'm sad to see it go. But as uh, as we all know, we can't hold on to old shoes forever. So I'm hoping that 2023 will bring me a good beacon replacement. Um, so we'll see what comes down the pipeline. So thank you for um, listening to my best shoes of 2022. I hope you enjoyed this mini episode. Um, don't forget to leave a comment or write a review, whether it's on the podcast app, Spotify, YouTube, or on our other social media channels. But we really do read the comments that you write. And if you've got any suggestions or recommendations, uh, would love to see them. Thanks, everyone.